we're in New York. The Jets have been the talk of the town. It's been a big story here ever since uh, Mr. I'm going to be taking receipts spoke out. This team has figured out how to win. This defense has been one of the elite defenses in the league. Some people say the number one defense in all of football, the way they've played. Uh, they've been outstanding. Offensively, it didn't work out for Zach Wilson. I, I've listened to a lot of analysts over the last couple of days say that the Jets should have him as the backup. He should not be sitting on the bench right now because it makes him look bad. It makes the organization look bad on what they believe he is as a quarterback moving forward. And and Flacco, the old man that he is, he should be sitting on the bench and being the quarterback somewhat coach. But he's not. He's the second guy. Mike White's looked really, really good. Uh, he's in both those games, he's heading to Buffalo. The last time we saw Mike White play Buffalo, four interceptions. Is Mike White the guy moving forward? Is this guy going to help this team make the playoffs this year? A year really faster than they thought they were going to be. It was next year where everybody thought they were going to contend and be as dominant as they were this year in certain aspects. I think next year they're going to be even better. They're going to be scary yeah. good next year. So where are the where are the Jets? Are they in the middle of the pack? Do they make the playoffs? Are they for real? Well, first off, shout out to Robert Sala because he's <laughs> done a great job turning this program great around. Great coach, yes. Uh, he's doing a great job as a head coach, great job as a defensive leader. I know he has a coordinator, but he still really leads that defense. And also just the general manager and the entire uh, talent organization picking the guys they picked, being able to get Sauce Gardner and Brees Hall. I mean, that's incredible, right? To get two guys Garrett that Wilson caliber. Too. In, uh, sorry, who'd you say? Garrett Wilson in two. Oh, Garrett Wilson. Yeah, all in one draft to be able to get that. It's absolutely incredible. And I hate to say that as a Dolphin supporter, as I just said. Uh, regarding your actual question, though, with Mike White, look, um, Zach Wilson's done. It, you know, should he be second string? Should he be third string? I do agree he should be the backup because you never know, right? What kind of internal motivation might there be? That guy standing on the sideline, seeing Mike White starting for the team instead of him. Mike White gets hurt. Uh, he has to come out because of concussion concerns or whatever the case might be. You throw him in, maybe it lights a fire under his ass. You have to give him that kind of opportunity, like a last ditch type of situation to say, hey, we're not going to completely give up on this guy yet because Joe Flacco being in that spot isn't doing you any good. Mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily think Joe Flacco is about to go out and do better than Zach Wilson would be and, and take you to the playoffs or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Heaven forbid for the Jets that Mike White gets injured. Mm -hmm. Regarding Mike White himself, he's a backup quarterback in mm -hmm. the NFL. He, he's not a starter. Uh, the Jets have a lot of great pieces, as we just mentioned. Their number one concern going into 2024 is finding a starting quarterback, whether that's through trade, free agency, or the draft. They need to do that. Mike White, can he get them to the playoffs this year? I think it's certainly possible just because the guy, he has that dog in him, right? He's not scared to throw the ball down the field and try to make some plays. However, in some games that leads to 325 yards, three touchdowns and a pick. And in others, it leads to 300 yards and four interceptions. And you're not going to win against quality teams. If you have a guy that's going to make mistakes to that level, I think we have six games of evidence uh, in terms of Mike yes. white. And it's yeah. a mixed bag. I, th I think two really good games for, Games that look up look like a backup NFL quarterback. I think it's and that's three, largely what he. I does. think it's three and three. I think uh, maybe that's fair. Yeah, it was three and three, and and even last game against Minnesota, the Jets should have won that game. They, and I'm not going to sit here and say they should have won that game. Uh, it was just bad play calling. I do not like Michael Floor. Uh, he has made a tremendous amount of mistakes. How many times were they in the red zone uh, against Minnesota, and they were on the doorstep uh, doorstep to put the ball in the end zone, and they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it because, hey, they're on the one-yard line and they decide to throw it three times. It reminds me of one guy and one guy only. The same guy that he worked under, Kyle Shanahan, who, by the way, didn't win as the offensive coordinator for Atlanta. Thank you to the Patriots. And then True. did the same thing against Kansas City in the Super Bowl when they were up by 10 with six minutes left against the Kansas City Chiefs. So he stopped running the ball. His strength. The same thing with Mike LaFleur. What is it with these guys? It doesn't make any sense. I get it. And it's not just NFL. It's college, too. I just mentioned, right, with TCU, Sonny Dykes, the uh, CBS Sports Coach of the Year. Everyone's giving him huge praise. Max be. Duggan dominating the entire game. They get to the goal line in overtime. They have four plays. This guy who is a running quarterback. What's the most What's the most successful play right now in football? Quarterback, quarterback sneak. sneak. Yeah. It, it, it converts all the time. They're on the one or two, something like that. He didn't touch it at all. I mean, he held, he handed it off a couple times. But that's it. He, he, they didn't have this guy run the ball 
do a bootleg, maybe throw it, anything. They didn't give it to him. So you can be the greatest coach, and it's NFL and it's college. It doesn't matter. You can be the greatest coach, makes genius play calls all the time, and yet you do things like that. You do the Pete Carroll where you throw <laughs> on the goal line for some reason, even though you have Marshawn Lynch, the best running back in football that year. It just it doesn't make any you sense. You have a six foot five quarterback that all he had to do is reach over the defensive line and, and you decide to throw the ball three times. You know what I would do? If I was Robert Sala, I'd kick down my desk, I'd have Mike LaFleur in that room, and I'd sit him down like a little baby and say, I'm gonna send you with your pampers back to your brother. Freaking figure this out. We're better than this. We should have beaten Minnesota in Minnesota. We should be heading back right now to Buffalo, uh, excited being eight and four and ready to make the play for first playoff berth since I don't know when, 10 years ago. Okay? It, it, it's the longest playoff drought in any, it, it, on any, it, in any, uh, I'm sorry, from any football team in the whole NFL. So it, it makes me sick to my stomach. I cannot sit and watch this offense anymore. And if they do that in Buffalo, Buffalo will eat them apart. And by the way, Von Miller's out for the season. Yep. So that's good news for the Jets and the Dolphins. Yes, and your Dolphins. And, and I'm, just yeah. add, I'm just adding that in there. It's and the Dolphins. <laughs> yeah, you, you, have, you have to make sure of that. It's not just the Jets. Show. I mean, oh, that's, no, no. Really, good, really good news for us. That could hurt That could hurt the Buffalo Bills. It oh, could, yeah. Absolutely. It could absolutely hurt the Buffalo Bills. And I think it's going to hurt the Buffalo Bills because he has been the the more dominant piece uh, for their defense in the first five or six games. And without him in that lineup, it absolutely – you're depending on young players to get at mm-hmm. the quarterback. And, and you saw the Jets. The Jets have a veteran offensive line. Besides, I mean, Elijah Vertuck is not there. Herbig, veteran. You look at Dwayne Brown, veteran. All those guys are veterans. A font, a veteran. That's a McGovern. They're all veterans. So they know what to do, and they know how to pass block and protect their quarterback. So I, I think it doesn't bode well. And, and this could be uh, – I don't know. A lot of people think that the Jets can't go into Buffalo and win. I, I'm telling you right now, this is, a, this is going to be a very – Close game and Josh Allen isn't hundred percent. Yeah, no, the the Bills they still have that. I don't know what it is. It's they have that level of talent and they have a, a great coach. Should be one of those top two or three teams in the AFC. And then Josh Allen gets into the red zone, or there's a situation where they need to make a comeback and they're just not necessarily able to finish it off. So the Bills, to me, I don't want to say they're fool's gold. I don't want to get people angry who are Bills fans mm-hmm. listening or anything like mm-hmm. that. They're fool's but gold. I, I just don't know that the Bills have what it takes to go through the playoffs and get to the Super Bowl the way they're currently constructed with the way, in particular, that Josh Allen is playing. We've seen bad Josh Allen. He made a great play on Thursday night, you know, running to the sideline. Unbelievable. And crazy throw for that. It was great. It was the best red zone play he's made of the entire season. But like the four prior weeks, he's turned the ball over like six times in the red zone. And he just keeps coughing it up. And you know how I know that? Because I bet on the Bills a lot. And I lost <laughs> a lot of money doing it. Okay? And they shouldn't be losing those games. Mm. So, you know, you have the Chiefs, super talented. The Bengals seem to be figuring things out. Yeah, I am going to shout out the Miami Dolphins. It was a hiccup yep. against the 49ers. But they've been playing incredibly. They have been. Uh, and they, I think they're built really to take down the Bills. They do a lot of things that the Bills aren't really able to defend. And with Von Miller out, having... Uh, Eric Fisher that they just signed and Taron Armstead, if he gets healthy, having those two veteran guys, all of a sudden the Dolphins look like a potential winner of the AFC East and the Jets are right there too. So the way the end of this season transpires, I don't necessarily think it's going to be the Dolphins and Jets with the Bills falling off. I, no, I, doubt I don't think so be the case, but I do think that the Jets have a chance to win any game. That all three teams in, are making the playoffs. The issues that they have right now. All three teams are making the playoffs. Eric Fisher very is a good awesome. signing, too, because he's got a lot of experience, too, with the Chiefs. That could definitely I couldn't even believe he was available. Yeah. I was very excited about yeah, that. Yeah, he had a bad year last year with the Colts, so nobody wanted to sign him, and the Miami gave him a shot after that. So, yeah. Yeah, well, they're in dire straits, so, you know. Yeah, I, who's more I was, motivated? I was than the I was very pick. concerned with their offensive line at the beginning of the season as it was. I did not think they would be the Dolphins. I, I didn't think the Dolphins would make the playoffs at the start of the year. I had them under five hundred, oh. and their offensive Listen, line man, has been very I, good. There was there were no expectations of anything yeah. for me to start the season. So, it's, <laughs> it's very interesting to be a Dolphin supporter here in South Florida, a team that has not given us hope for an extended period of time. I and mean, we, we had the wildcat year and that was cool, but yes. everyone knew to want to talk about fool's gold. That was fool's gold. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was going away. And we've had a couple players here and there that mm. you can get excited about, but the whole thing hasn't really come together. I think this is the first time the dolphins have the quarterback and the coach. Mm-hmm. Mike McDaniel is that dude. And I think everyone's just super excited. Again, what the potential is for this team. There were no expectations 
to do much of anything this year. They almost seem like a surefire playoff team, maybe even a team that's almost certainly going to get to the second round. Yeah. And then you say, okay, what about year two with all these guys? So I'm really excited for 2024, but this year it's just cake. Like every single week, seeing them perform the way they're performing, it's pretty exciting to live down here in so, South Florida. So where do you rank them in the AFC right now? I, 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 and do you think they can win the division now with Buffalo having all Top four injuries? team, I think they're in the Top AFC four, yeah, yeah, tough four. Top four. Uh, Ch- okay, Chiefs, Chiefs, probably the Bills ahead until they're not – um, Bengals and Dolphins. Bengals, okay. Right there. G3. I don't, I don't think the Bengals are there either. I think I the Bengals talent-wise are there, but the Dolphins are better coaching, I think, than the Bengals. T3. Are. I think yeah. they're tied there. They have the, the Bengals have the experience. Uh, the Dolphins are figuring it out. The question is, really, I think the, the Bengals are so how, overrated. How are they going to bounce back this mm-hmm. week? Because, uh, you know, they lost to the 49ers. Bad loss. They stayed out in California. Now they're playing the Chargers, and the talk through his entire career, has been Tua versus Justin Herbert, and they got a chance to now go head-to-head on Sunday Night Football. If the Dolphins bounce back, it's going to tell you a lot about them as a franchise. I think, I think they win that game by double digits. I think the Dolphins will Hope win. So. I, I think they'll knock out the Chargers. The Chargers will be done after that because there's no way they're making the playoffs, especially when you have the Jets. They're two games ahead of you. You have the Patriots 6-6, six and six, and I can't see the Patriots winning, but losing back-to-back games. Even though the Patriots' schedule is hard, their next couple mm-hmm. of weeks are going to be hard. They're going to play the Bengals too. As they got to the yep. they gotta play the Bills and they got to play the Bengals. Yeah, you know. So yeah, they, the, the Patriots they got all of a sudden a reputation like within the last couple of weeks before this past week against the Bills. The great defense, Bill Belichick's figured everything out. They were playing nobodies. Mm-hmm. They were beating up on on children for the most part. Now they're facing a meaty schedule starting with the Bills. And you saw what happened. They got exposed they would, on Thursday. They would, I don't think the Patriots are anything. They would have the never Bears. beaten the Jets if they had a quality quarterback throwing the ball. They would have never won in, in MetLife, and they had mm-hmm. they would have had no chance of winning that game against the Jets in, in, in New England if they had Mike White throwing the ball. 